Hello, America. Welcome to the Glenn Beck Program and to GBTV. Tonight, I, I, I want to talk to you about fundamental transformation, and I want to talk to you um, about something that has been bothering me, um, I, think in, I think, since Thanksgiving of, of last year. Thanksgiving of last year, if you remember the last episode I did in New York, I think December 15th, I read to you out of my journal um, a letter, part of a letter that I wrote to my kids and said, I think the world is changing. Um, Thanksgiving, it really, it, it bothered me. Um, I'm a guy who goes by my gut and my feelings on warnings. I listen to it. And it hasn't steered me wrong yet. And something's been bothering me, and I've been saying it to my staff, something's not right, something is coming, something's different. And I didn't know what it was until last Friday. And I have thought about it, and uh, last night I got up because there was a thunderstorm here, the loudest thunderstorms on the planet in, in Texas. My dogs were up all night licking my face, freaking out, so I got up in the middle of the night and I, I made some notes on some thoughts on this because I want to talk to you about the fundamental transformation of America because I think that we need to change the way we're thinking because I think the battle has changed. When Barack Obama said five days before the presidential election in 2008, I'm going to fundamentally transform the nation and the world. The media didn't bother to question it. Brushing it off, it was campaign rhetoric, et cetera, et cetera. But with progressives, words have meaning. Uh, their words are carefully crafted and calculated, and fundamental transformation is important. Fundamental is defined as um, of relating to essential structure, function. Transformation means to change in composition or structure. That's kind of big. Obama wasn't hoping to get into office so he could, you know, change some tax codes and do a little less or a little more spending. His goal was to change the entire structure of the United States of America and the world. Those were his words. In order to do that, you have to take apart the existing structure. Um, this is uh, something I put up on the board today. I wrote this in my journal about... Mm, Bush was still in office. And I was worried about the road that we were heading on. And I thought, there, there's, something, there's something not quite right. Um, and the world is not the way I have always perceived it. Um, and it really started with George W. Bush down on the border. And I started looking into things. And I thought, okay, if you're going to take over the United States of America, you either do it militarily, which you're not going to be able to do, or you collapse it or, and I didn't know this phrase at the time, you fundamentally transform it. That's the way to go. That's the easiest route because people are asleep. But to do that, you have to control certain things. You have to control transportation. That is air flight, that is your car, that's um, any kind of transportation. You have to control information, what's going in uh, to the home and what is coming out of the home. You have to have good intel but you also have to be able to have propaganda and what's going out. You have to control food and health, shelter. You also have to control energy, faith, and jobs. If you get all, oh, and one more thing, security. That means police, um, even people's fear of, can I leave my house? Is it safe to leave my house? Can I leave my possessions so I can go pursue happiness? Do you have all of those things? If you take enough of those off of the board and you control them and you turn them upside down, you can control what people do and you can fundamentally transform things. This is the list that I made last night along with this. And I thought, have they done it yet? I want you to know, Obama is, this is so not about Barack Obama. He's not the first radical to come along trying to fundamentally transform America. Woodrow Wilson did it, then FDR did it, and all the people in between. They've been doing it for decades, slowly, bit by bit, one piece at a time. But Woodrow Wilson and FDR were the ones that made the breathtaking pushes. There was a guy who lived in the 1940s and 1930s and 40s that wrote a book in 1942. His name was Stuart Chase, and the name of the book was The Road We Are Traveling. Now, Chase is the guy who coined the term the New Deal. In this book, The Road That We're Traveling, he was a um, 
Fabian socialist, and uh, he liked the idea of transforming America. He focused on um, what America has done. And once America has dispensed with the free enterprise entirely, he wrote that while you could call this new society communist, state capitalist, or fascist, he preferred to call it just political system X. Here's a progressive that didn't want to have names because he knew nobody wanted to have fascists in 1942. Nobody wanted to have communists in 1942. So he just said it's, it's political uh, system X. He said, once you have enough of these things, you'll not be able to turn the ship around anymore. In his book, he said, these are the things that you need. You need a strong centralized government. Do we have one now or not? Strong centralized government. You need an executive arm growing at the expense of the legislative and judici ju ju judicial arm. Do we have that? Yes. Control of banking, credit, and security exchanges by the government. Oh, we've got that one in spades now. The underwriting of employment through armaments or by public works. I'd call that the stimulus package, wouldn't you? Then he said, you also need uh, underwriting of social security by the government. We have that. Underwriting of food, housing, and medical care by the government. Uh, we're going to get to this one here in a minute. Uh, this food stamps and medical care, Obamacare. The use of, listen to this, 1942, the use of deficit spending to finance all of these things. The abandonment of gold in lieu of managed currency. The Fed did that in the 1970s. You also need government control over trade. We have that. Natural resources. We have that. Transportation. We have that. Agricultural production. That's important. That's what we've been focusing on this show in the last few weeks. Organized labor unions. Does the government control the organized labor unions or does, do the labor unions control the government? And youth corps. A youth and people dedicated to the ideology of government authority. I, I'm telling you now, this is Occupy Wall Street. Heavy taxation of estates and incomes on the wealthy. State control over communications and propaganda. I think we're getting awfully darn close to that. Chase said again that it would be a tipping point with enough of these in place and the country would fundamentally transform and you would not turn the ship. The name of the book, again, that he wrote was The Road We Are Traveling. This was the thing that dropped everything into place. As I wasn't talking about Stuart Chase last week, we were talking about a new book, or I'm sorry, a new film of Barack Obama. Can anybody tell me the new propaganda docu documentary they just made on him? What's the name of it? The Road We Have Traveled. The Road We Have Traveled. 1942, 2012. The Road We Have Traveled progressives, 